You're listening to Five Things with Lisa Birnbach. Hi, I'm Lisa Birnbach, and I can't help it. I have schtissel on the brain. I know I've talked about it before here, how this unassuming television series crept up and grabbed a piece of my heart. I don't exactly know, but it has. So many of my friends have watched Stissel, it's hard to say, or are watching it now, and the refreshingly original, some bizarre characters are a topic we discuss now, and it's so far from what's going on in the world, American and world politics. Are these Hasidic people that we are watching on television, on Netflix, with subtitles, because they're speaking Hebrew and Yiddish. Is this just pure escapism? It's hard to believe. The characters in the program have numerous disappointments, peccadilloes, misunderstandings, people die, some storylines kind of trail off, which can be disappointing. And yet, this show is so full of plot, so full of heart and love and humor. And if I haven't persuaded you to watch it yet, okay. But I need to say, you don't have to be Jewish to enjoy it. So many people in social media who are posting about shtissel are not Jewish. And one friend of mine said, oh, it's a good thing I found the uh, subtitles because I really didn't get it, but I loved it. So anyway, that's my little preamble. I have a shtissel head. I cannot help it. Okay, but on to the five things that made my week great. And by the way, big guest coming up. Big, big guest in this show, on this very show. So I will just tease that for now. Number one, I'd like to brag about my exhibits if I could. Each one of them is so hardworking, it makes a mother proud. Exhibit A has about a million different jobs, as do all freelance artists, relatively speaking, but and relatively early in their careers, and he auditions, and he produces, and he writes, and he directs, and he cut his first single, and he does voiceovers, but he does not take a day off. Exhibit B has a full-time job in Los Angeles, which can include late nights and weekends, but because she'd like to have more spending money, she's decided it's time to get a second part-time job. And Exhibit C has a regular schedule of two jobs every week, but has taken two more this week. And, you know, they could all ask me for money, but two of them won't. And anyway, they want to be financially independent. So what did I do right? Huh? Number two, we bought a big TV over the weekend, really big, the kind I never thought I'd want to have in my own house, maybe if I owned a tavern. But anyway, we went to the electronics store, in this case, Best Buy on Broadway and 66th Street. And maybe it was because we came in late in the day, but the salespeople were goofballs, but great goofballs, knowledgeable goofballs. One of them, a woman named Des, she kept saying, your dinner table isn't ready. And Brandon and Johan were spectacular. And they made us feel good. They made us feel like they actually cared, not about the commission, but about us and our satisfaction with the TV and the sound bar. Did we need a sound bar? I don't know. It has a woofer. That's all I know. Anyway, never has spending too much money been so fun. So if anybody from Best Buy is listening, Des, Brandon, and Johan, they are superstars. I would probably buy anything from them. So I'm going to probably try now to stay away from Best Buy on 66th Street. Number three, I've tried to live dairy-free this week, and I can tell you I don't care for it. I don't. I like butter. I like cream. I like cheese. I live for butter. I mean, it basically is my favorite food because I like salty butter better than sweet butter. I just love it. I mean, this is, I'm, I'm going through withdrawal. So I bought the highly touted Oatly milk, which is pretty good in coffee. It's creamy. It doesn't look like cream, but it's it's good. But in cereal, not so good. So I am trying. If I'm cranky, it's because today I had my toast with flaxseed oil drizzled on it instead of butter, as if. And I am 
trying very hard to find the good news, the number three good news about being dairy-free. But if I can conquer dairy-free, then I'll be very happy. And so will you. Number four, investigative journalists. Without Jane Mayer, Megan Toohey, Jody Cantor, Ronan Farrow, Jill K. Brown, Sarah Elizabeth Ganim, and of course, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, we would not know a lot of stuff. I was talking to my friend Jamie today, and we were talking about our gratitude for people who pursue a story, even though it's difficult to get, even though your bosses may dissuade you from it or throw obstacles up. Think about the college admission scandal. Think about Coach Sandusky. Think about Harvey Weinstein. Think about Roger Ailes and what's gone on at Fox. Think about Gabriel Sherman. He's another one who's broken these stories. And it's, as you know, it's not well-paid work. And as you know, people get threatened. It's not a glamorous job. It's a hard job. You sometimes have to leave your family and loved ones for weeks at a time while you're working on something. You can find yourself in a war, in a crossfire. It's not glamorous, it's not well paid, but it is rewarding and it is something I'm grateful to. Don't call it fake news. That really doesn't validate all the work they do. It's just not fair. Let's just say thank you to them. And number five, it's Robert Mueller time. A friend of mine actually had a bracelet made for me with pictures of Robert Mueller and little slogans saying it's Mueller time all around it. It would make too much noise if I wore it on the air, but I'll take a picture of it. It's Mueller time, baby, this week or next week. And now I am so pleased that my special, special guest, Chip Kidd, is here in the studio live and in person and wearing some really fantastic duds or threads. I've never said duds before in my life. I have to take that back. He's wearing fantastic threads. And by the way, I never say that either, but I like it. I like it with him. I like him. Chip, as you know, is a writer, an art director, a curator of all things superhero. He's also a musician. He designs the best books, and he's a friend. We did a book together, and we met the old-fashioned way. I'm Christian Mingle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Chip Kidd to the broadcast. Hey, Chip. It's so nice to see you sitting opposite me. It's been a while. It has been a while. I'm, I'm glad to be here. And you look fantastic. You've had a... No, you do, but you've had a tough year, and uh, it's just a relief to see you in fine form. Um, well, thanks. For those who don't know, Chip's husband, Sandy McClatchy, the poet died about a year ago. Yeah, it'll be a year uh, this April 10. Oh, it's really coming up. Yeah. So it's tough. I mean, there was there was a 20-year age difference, and we were together 22 years. Um, so, you know, and <laughs> at the risk of TMI, I mean, I've always been into older guys, so... That Although, was going to happen. Yeah. I mean, right. you, you, you try to mentally prepare yourself because just logistically, the odds are that that's what's going to happen. Right. Um, did we think we would have had, you know, 10, 15 more years? Yeah, I yeah. sort of hope so. But, right. But, you know, he, um, I'd say th three or four times I got the, um, well, I've had a good life speech. and um, and And he did. I mean, he was... He was 71. He published a ton of books. He edited a ton of books. And then he had this whole chapter two career in his life around when I met him, when he, and he was 50 and I was 30, of uh, being an opera librettist. And that was really wonderful to see over the years. And... Um, because he just loved that. And that was a life changer. I mean, you never thought you'd be going to the opera around the world as you did. I mean... <laughs> no, I, I, but uh, I did not, and, and I enjoyed it. And, and, you know, as he said, as part of the I Had a Good Life speech, um, which was first delivered in the hospital, uh, he took bows on the stages of the Metropolitan Opera, La Scala, and Covent Garden so for his work. And, you yeah. know, as a, like as an opera fan... 
It doesn't get better than that. No. No, as you say, for his work, not because he was a friend of somebody or knew the star. He got to... Because he, was, he wrote the words. Yeah, incredible, yeah. incredible. And you were, you were, you know, the love of his life, as as uh, I know he, he you were, mm-hmm. and um, you and also yeah, had a very exciting mutual. life together. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. But it's a huge adjustment. Yes, it huge. is, and, and and our and our work was intertwined. But yes. but um, and and this is something I think that we're going to talk about. Um, because we, i.e. Knopf, the, the publisher I work for, uh, publish him. So actually when when he became ill, that in a way that made it easier. Because A, everybody knew him. And B, I'd been there so long that everybody knew me and, and were very understanding and just said, you know, do what you have to do. I mean, Sonny Mehta said, just do what you have to do. Everybody gave you gave you warmth and support they because did. They, they did and they knew this was uh, you know you weren't taking advantage of your 30 plus years at right. Knopf you were you had earned it yes but I didn't take it for granted and and you know so much with this and it, it was a two year illness and it was stage three cancer and wild Cornell and all of that but it really did um, refocus how I thought about you know, and and the, the 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 healthcare debate will go on and on and on and on. But I just kept thinking, what do people who aren't in a job like this do right. when they really have to show up right. for work oh. nine to five or whatever? What do people who have shitty insurance? Can I swear on this? Yes, show? you okay. can. It's encouraged. <laughs> and also, and also, Chip, there's another thing. You also had. And have great relationships, long-term relationships with your doctors, which you're able to have because of your insurance. So many people who have to change. And I've had to change doctors repeatedly for different insurance. And you don't have your history with you. Right. Doctors don't even know. Well, I mean, um, that is true. But, you know, look, the whole on- oncology team, that was all new. Yeah, you know, true. And... and uh, and and this is a sort of abstract, weird thought, but you know, they, every now and then you hear about this concept of like, well, well, in the future, we'll all have a computer chip, <laughs> yeah. and they'll scan that, and it will tell them everything. You know what? I'm all for it. Yeah, I am in, in all seriousness. I am all for it because I can't tell you how many times. Like you think once you're quote in the system, mm-hmm. everybody knows everything. Mm-hmm. No, right? And you and you would have to recount. The entire history of everything, a lot. Yeah. If, well, I, I think if they would put the chip in my heel mm-hmm. and uh, cover it up with all that dead skin, I wouldn't <laughs> mind it at all. I really wouldn't. And it would be so efficient. Well, and, you know, Sandy's name, Joseph Donald McClatchy. Right. Oh, my God. McCuskey, McClicky, McCookie, McCooking, McC- you know, it just, no, no, McClatchy, oh. M, small c, capital C, L-A-T-C-H-Y, date of birth, you know. I know. You, I know. Every, every, every time. And on top of everything. And, and it's like a full-time job. It's like a full-time job. Yeah, jinx. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's absolutely so. The one thing that is, I, I just want to reiterate what a beautiful life you two had together, what a beautiful life you have, how you are totally (laughs) self-made, how you came to New York from Penn State with a degree in graphic design, Mm -hmm. and within, what, a year, within within the year, you were working at Knopf, and within about two years, you... were finally starting to do some design. I got lucky. Well, the Donna Tartt cover was the first time I think I ever heard of you or made well, the made the choice to see who designed this book. Hmm. That was uh, an inter- secret history. It was an interesting year, 1992, because it was also, well, for me, um, it was also uh, All the Pretty Horses by Cormac McCarthy. Right. The Donna Tart, um, I believe the Marlena Dietrich biography, too, where we just put her face on the front. Oh, yes. Um, there were a couple of like exciting things that happened in terms of the book covers that year. It was it was, but they gave them to you, a junior young young person. 
Yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah. I, I mean, and you know, and when you say I'm self-made, that's very flattering. But again, the, I mean, the basic. I mean, there were the people that hired me, a woman named Sarah Eisenman and Bob Scutellari, in the fall of 1986, at Knopf. Um, but within it, you know, all these changes happened, and within a year, Bob Gottlieb was gone as the editor in chief. And Sarah, my boss, was gone because she met and married David Godine oh. in Boston. Mm-hmm. And and then my new boss, Carol Devine Carson, arrived to be the art director. And then Sonny uh, Mehta arrived to be the editor in chief. Had those two things not happened, I probably wouldn't. I don't. I can't say for sure that I wouldn't have stuck around, but I don't think I would have been able to do the work that I wanted to do. Because, well, Carol had complete faith in you. Carol had faith. I think one of the great things about Carol, besides the fact that she's a great designer, is that she was coming new to books too. She was from Scholastic. Oh, we didn't sit down and have a ma- meeting and say we're going to reinvent Knopf. Um, it was all just kind of through osmosis, or you know. And he bought, and the first book that he bought for Knopf was this novel called Geek Love. Uh-huh. By Catherine Dunn, and and that was probably the first jacket that I was able to do that that had some kind of new presence or something Wait, like that. Wait, you did that book too? Mm-hmm. The hardcover was first of all, it was a field of bright fluorescent orange. Um, oh right, 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 and strange lettering and strange lettering, which I did by hand because it's about a freak show, and so. It's like a family of letters that look like they belong together, but they're different. Mm-hmm. Um, and and plus, I mean, it's an amazing book, and oh, with that. Lo- <laughs> lots of weird stuff going on in it. And I think that was uh, that was Sonny's sort of statement about like this is can, this is the new Knopf. Well, and it's been a great run, <laughs> and because Knopf is also one of the most venerated literary houses, you got to work with. Um, uh, people, you you got to work with John Updike. Well, and the whole Updike story, um, I don't know how far you want me to go into it, but that was really, truly extraordinary because he grew up in exactly the same, literally, village that I did in in Pennsylvania. Shellington. Shellington. And his father was my father's math teacher in high school. And my dad was, what, four years older. So in his... My, in my dad's um, yearbook, a sen- when he was a senior, you see little Johnny Updike, who was, by even then, the editor-in-chief of the school newspaper. Oh, wow. And so I grew up hearing about this you know, famous guy that my grandmother referred to as the man who wrote that dirty book. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Couples? Well, <laughs> Any. No, Rabbit, Run. Rabbit. Rabbit Run has the F word in it. I, be- uh, I believe. Oh, it probably right? does. Well, and he has would, dirty thoughts. Well, and at, Rabbit, and at know. the time that was that was quite something. It would have, that was what late fifties. It was. No, I think he wrote it in the seventies, about the fifties. Rabbit Run? No, no, no. It's the fifties. It is. I'm pretty sure. Wow. Yeah. Oh, maybe I read it in the seventies. <laughs> That's so funny. I thought it just. I discovered it, and there it was. Yeah, and it's all and oh the, well, then all, that's the whole, really dirty. Yeah, in that case. well, it was it would have been shocking at yeah, the time, and yeah. and but and but and then the and his editor with this amazing woman Judith Jones, who also discovered Julia Child, and so anyway, so I then I get hired at Knopf, and now I um You're work working, working with on Updike. Updike book, and he loved the. Um, he loved that connection. Uh, for some, and I, this is my joke about it, like Shillington, there is nothing to distinguish it. It is just, it's it's dopey suburban southeastern Pennsylvania, and yet all the rabbit books, a, a lot of the short stories, some of the other novels, they're all set there, and they're all inspired by that place. And my my sort of my soundbite about that is, is like as an artist, it's like. It's like you're a painter and you're inspired by beige. <laughs> like why? Why, why there, and how? There's nothing distinguishing about it. But it was just so weird because I read those and I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That hasn't changed at all. It's so generic in a way. But yeah. but he created a kind of um, a kind of suburbia that 
we can all relate to, even those of us who grew, grew up in a very different way in a very different place. Hmm. You know, hmm. the kind of, there is a drudgery. There is a great privilege to being alive and well, but there's also great drudgery in a life. And, yeah. and he sure got that at the mm. car dealership mm. and so on. Mm. You just feel sorry for those people and yeah. yet get get very identified with them too. Yeah. Yeah. Um and and, and Oliver he w- oh sorry. Well and 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 Updike was so prolific that there was almost it seemed like a book a year. Did you ever have a meal with John Updike? You know what? No. Uh, it so I didn't really see the only times I saw him quote socially would be at the Academy of Arts and Letters mm-hmm. uh, where Sandy was the president. Right. And so I would see him there. Um, but no, d- um, d- we didn't really see each other outside of the office as opposed to somebody like Donna mm-hmm. Tart, which I did, um, James Elroy, mm-hmm. Oliver Sacks. Mm-hmm. Um, you believe this list? And yeah, Haruki Murakami. Yeah, Haruki. <laughs> Karuki. So being at Knopf, you are this visual guy mm-hmm. from Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Like they, not that Penn State is anything but a fantastic American university, mm-hmm. but you didn't grow up in a preppy world. You didn't grow up in a moneyed world. Mm-hmm. And you weren't that much a word person. You were a visual person. But you became. You, your life is such one of letters. It's really, you know, yes, dinner with Oliver Sacks, yes, right. Murakami, yes. I mean, it's it's pretty amazing, isn't it? Or it is, is it not anymore? No, it's it is amazing, and I think, it, yeah. But and it, I mean, I always, I I did always love to read. Right. Um, it's just that now you have to read with this kind of purpose in in mind. I mean, of course, there's pleasurable reading as well, but. Um, yeah, you're it's you're reading and your your brain is just activated to sort of like pick up anything that where you think, oh, that is something that's referred to that could somehow symbolize what this experience is like visually for the reader, presumably before they start reading. How many books do you design for for how many books do you design covers a year approximately? And you know, I get asked that a lot and I never know how to answer it. I think at this point probably about 20 mm-hmm. but then there's always you some, always have there's always some big either personal project or as you were mentioning in the introduction I am the acquiring editor for graphic novels at Pantheon which is a part of Knopf. Um, so for example this fall um we have this huge major graphic novel by Chris Ware coming out called um, Rusty Brown that he's been, I know he's been working on for at least 12 years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And and he's one of my best friends and his daughter is my goddaughter. And that's, you know, and, you know, if you're lucky enough to keep doing this for a long time, you form relationships and friendships and, you know, it's... It's good. It is good. But, and you have all kinds of side projects. You you sometimes do record covers, yeah, I, you sometimes yeah. do movie posters, you sometimes do yes, lots of other things. As yeah, as things come up. It's, and I don't I don't have an agent for any of that stuff and it's it's really word of mouth. It's word of mouth and and you know, it's funny. I still have quote a website and um for a while of course, then when social media came along, I thought, well, what do I need the website for? But um, I've gotten work from it. You know, it's that thing where they can't contact you directly. You just get a message on your thing I, and you can, you can decide whether to respond or not. And I've gotten, you know, I've gotten some decent little jobs from that. Yeah, that's how that's how we met. We swiped. <laughs> we swiped right or left. Which no, is no, it? No, we did meet on... Christian Mingle. <laughs> we did meet. On, I meant that we swiped on Christian Mingle. That's how we met. Everybody knows that. That story is enshrined in, you know, in stone. Um, when we met, I thought that you were the most 
carefully, beautifully dressed man I had seen in years and years and years. And I was so excited <laughs> by your, no, I, I, I am excited by your wardrobe. I always am excited to see what you're gonna wear. Now, there was a time when we did a book together called True Prep, which is still in print, that yes. I got to know your wardrobe pretty well. Well, you know, uh, this shirt. Yes, from uh, from Brooks Brothers. Black, Black Fleece. Black Fleece, which is gone. Well, and you know, can I just say that my two late lamented, I don't know if you want to call them brands, that sounds so cheap, but, you know, the Black Fleece by Tom Brown for for uh, Brooks Brothers was just incredible. It was incredible. Not only did Chip have a great you know, wardrobe before the book, but after the book, oh, we got so much good stuff. I did. I did. <laughs> Sandy was appalled. <laughs> was like, that we took it? it was, they, they gave you all those clothes? That's oh, outrageous. I know. It was outrageous. <laughs> Everything about it was outrageous. It was. It was especially, so great. Especially the photo shoot in his apartment. I know. That was great. We did a picture in True Prep. Well, many pictures. Uh, a kind of... It's a little portfolio of the wedding. The second the wedding. The second wedding. I, I'll never forget that with Marina Rust. It oh, was just amazing. Oh, my gosh. It was so funny. So the whole idea was that preppies marry compulsively, and <laughs> they're almost like movie stars. Hey, they're just like us. <laughs> and so we were trying to stage the ultimate preppy second marriage, and it, it, it was incredible looking. It was. It was. And especially when you, I mean, we really, frankly, did it on the cheap. Yes. And uh and it looks I don't know, it looks it looks really it looks great. Rich. But I remember yeah. the all the kids on the bed watching the T V. It was it was very perfect funny. how how it came together. Yeah. And Shelley Wanger, our editor, was a hero in that. Yes. And in many yes. other things. Yeah. So let's go to um your five things. Okay. And in your case six because you're special. Well, all right. Um let's see. And the order is not important. All right. The order is not important, although I know, I know the one thing I want to end with. Um, okay. Let's start with the Second Avenue subway. Ah, okay. okay. The Second Avenue subway, number one. So, and I remember, I mean, this isn't even funny, but I remember I was out of my terrace once, whatever year that was, and I just, I just hear this explosion. And, and I thought, oh, oh, shit. 9-11 again. 9-11 again. again. But Except, no. <laughs> Except there were no sirens. And I'm like, a bomb just went off. Where are the sirens? And then you hear, beep, beep, <laughs> beep. <laughs> and it was just, you know. They we were could, drilling. We could have used a little warning there. Yeah, that, that would have been nice. That they're blowing up the street. Yeah. And those poor um, Second Avenue uh, uh, merchants. They were out of business for like three, four years. Yeah, yeah. They had the scaffold. It was a mess. But now... But this, now... So, so wait, you used to have to take the Lexington to the NRR mm -hmm. to get to work and then mm -hmm. walk on either side? Right. What do you do now? I walk one block to this beautiful glass canopy, and I, I go way, way down. <laughs> I, the one thing about it, I mean, it doesn't bother me, but wow, is that deep. And it's, it's very wonderful. clean, but, but it's almost too clean, too nice, and it's definitely so steep. It's very steep. It's you very steep. You feel like you're going to the middle of the earth. But I do feel like they built it just for me. They might have, Be because nobody else takes it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go down there, and, and, it's, and it's true. I mean, there's like four other people in the car. Exactly. And... I take it two stops, and I'm at work. Oh, come on. It's, I, and, and I feel guilty about it because I should be walking to work, except I'm usually late or it's cold or I'm schlepping things. Right. Um, because walking to work from my place just takes a little over a half an hour, but it's it's across. It would and, be a sweaty half an hour, oh, you know? And it, and it is. I've done it, I've done it before. Um, yeah. But here they, you know, they spent four billion dollars for you, Chip. For me. How about that, Charles I know. Kid? Yes, I, 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 that I, is I, really. I, 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 you know, I appreciate that. Okay, so gratitude. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Number two. Number two, the New York Times crossword puzzle. I couldn't agree more. Now, how I, do I love it? You're, you'll have to like literally shut me up about this. Okay. Because I could go on for like two hours. Let's just first the daily. 
the mini, the daily. Which ones are are your passions? Uh, the daily. Okay. Okay. The biggie. The, the, yeah, the mini thing. I mean, come on, please, okay. please. Yeah. And, and I don't want to sound. Good... I don't want to sound like a snob, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, and this will sound like a snob, and and it, and it was actually Sandy that really got me into it because we used to do it together. Monday is super easy. Tuesday is also super easy. I don't do them. You don't even do them. No. Oh wow. I know, but it's. I still get a joy out of doing them in under ten minutes. I just it. It's it, to me. It's it's. I'm new it, at it. It's called fish in a barrel. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I just, I don't want to shoot them. Okay. It, it's not fair to them. Okay. So Wednesday, it starts to get interesting. But my rule is I have to start at one across and then one down. I have to. Oh, interesting. You go to one down after you've done one across? Yes. You have to do the upper, you have to do the whole upper left. You have to start with the upper left corner. And well, it, I mean, everybody. For me. Wait, you Just mean people me. don't start there? I always start at one across, and then I do all the acrosses, and then I go really? down. Yeah. That's not how you do it? No. No. I And for Wednesday and Thursday, you they all have to be connected. So if you, st you start with, you get one thing, then you have to use one of the letters that you already have to get to the next thing. You right. can't skip around. Right. Right. What if and you don't Thursday, know that one be, across? And Thursday, th well, then you got to sit there and think. Wow. Yeah. You're it's, tough. It's it, it, the crossword puzzle, it, and you know this is a cliche, but I really believe it's true, especially in the last couple of years. It's um, it's it's mental uh, uh, gymnastics. Gymnastics. It, it, it is. It, it, it's uh, what's the c word? I can't think of it. When you're oh. on the treadmill, um, it's cardio for your brain. Yeah. It, it really is. Yeah. Um. And Thursday, in that sense, becomes the hardest because there's usually some kind of gimmick on Thursday. In fact, this is last Thursday's puzzle, and I'm about to give up. Um, oh wait, let but me I see got, it. But I got the I got the gimmick, which is the black hat. Remember that? Oh yeah, I do remember that. I do remember. So I want to say, this is <laughs> Chip's paper, and I see that he does it, of course, in ink. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can see also that I've screwed up a bit. But. No, but I never got bar car. That's very good. Very good. And it is, it's like learning a new language. It is. It's, it's like really. Because there are certain words, and, and Scrabble is sort of the same, although interestingly, I'm not a big Scrabble person because I usually don't have somebody else to play with. But um, there are words that will only be used in crossword puzzles but and they're and they're real words obviously but y you know you don't oh you, god they're words that appear every single day right Edie as in falco mm -hmm. is in all the time spa is in all the time i'm always so surprised and there's a river in belgium oh i with, hate the rivers with the y eser eser y-s-e-r yeah, yeah that's in a lot and and and, and the, erie lake erie or right. erie pennsylvania and any of the sports people, I'm I'm oh, hopeless. Yeah. It's yeah. like no, I need. Yeah. So and then by Friday, I free myself up that I can jump around if I want. And, and Friday's hard. Well, Friday's then, legendarily hard. Well, but and Saturday. Saturday mm. I once in a while, even uh, my secret is I usually don't even look at Saturdays because <laughs> it's so tough. But you know, it's sometimes I get some, lucky. Yeah, and and I used to tell um, design students. Because they, they say, what happens if you, you're you working on a project and you get stuck? You don't know what to do. And A, in a lot of my work, the one luxury I have is time. Book publishing, as you know, we're, on, we're still on this schedule where we're working six months ahead and it's not due tomorrow. Right. So if I'm working on some sort of thing and I, it's just not coming together in my head, put it aside and all, I also have the luxury of, like, I'm working on five things at once. Right. So, okay, now I, I'm just going to go put put this out of my mind, go work on this other thing. And really, subconsciously, your mind is still working on it. Yeah, of course. And the, the, my, to solve a problem. My an analogy to that is the crossword puzzle. And Saturday can work like that. Um, and Friday, too. But when it's really, really hard 
and you you know you concentrate on it for I don't know an hour and scratching out a little thing here and there, or if, you know if there's a plural, then you put the s, s at the in. end. <laughs> it is a little satisfying. It li- yes, it's pathetic. It's but pathetic. It's, yeah. But then you put it away. You go do something else. You know, take a shower, do an errand, something like that, and then you come back to it. And sometimes it's like, oh, that's what they meant. Uh huh. I've thought of words in the shower and jumped out and tried to yes. work them in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah no, absolutely. I've seen I've I've seen the videos of that on YouTube. Yes, yes, on on the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> the dark web. Yeah, the puzzle is really fantastic. My- I'm now communicating with the wordplay editors on Twitter because I play uh, spelling bee first. Okay. That's the first one I do. That's where you have to make a word, word many words out of seven letters oh, they give you. That drives me nuts. And today they didn't like duty. And I I wrote to them on Twitter and I said, what do you have against duty? And they tried to make me feel like a four-year-old boy. They tried to sh- shame me, but there were other people who supported duty. As in D-O-O-D-Y? Correct. Isn't yeah. that a real word? Well, yeah. And I mean, and howdy duty. Howdy duty. Yeah. D-O-O-D-Y. Sure. They wouldn't accept it. Weird. Fuddy-duddy, they wouldn't accept either. It had all those letters, but maybe fuddy-duddy is a hyphenated word. I don't know. Hmm. When I look in the mirror, I see a fuddy-duddy, <laughs> and I don't see a hyphen. That's all I'm saying. My my favorite thing about the... My favorite clue, Saturday clue, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Um, and, of course, it doesn't work verbally, but the clue was A N U M B E R of people. Okay? So if we say it it's a number a number, a number of, of people. people. The answer was ether. A number. It's a number of people. people. Did they use a question mark no, at the end? No. Those bastards. How dare they? But how brilliant is that though? No, it's brilliant, but their puns are you know, not for not, the weak of heart. But it's not even a pun though. It's it's what what that what it's it's that that N-U-M-B-E-R has two meanings. Yes, it does. Which but is kind of great. It's kind of brilliant. But, of course, we think of the one with the B that you hear, mm-hmm. and they were thinking of the B that you don't hear. and Because you're just reading it. Because you're reading it. Right. They do that kind of thing a lot. They're smart. They are. Do you know those people? Will... I, wish, I wish I did. Um, I wish I did, and you know why? Why? Because I want to be in the fucking puzzle. Well, I mean, haven't lo- you been in it? No. But I mean, all kinds of people I mean, have come been on. In it. It's two four-letter words. I know. How about book designer kid? What's so hard about that? What is so hard about that, damn it? So. You know what we should do? We should, and I know, I, I know how to do this, I think. I mean, it's going to involve skill that I may not have, but I think I could get us I have to start a dating, chance. I have to start dating Will Shorts. Is that what you're going to say? Well, I wasn't, but that's mm. a thought mm. if he's single. And and, and and likes the penis. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but what if we um, asked to write a puzzle together? <laughs> and put ourselves into it. No, we can't put ourselves into it, but then oh. they would, out of gratitude, wouldn't they... I, book hey, designer let's kid. Go for it. I mean, book designer four letters. Yeah, they're putting new people in all the time. Yeah, yeah, and I'm they just give saying, you their little bios. Yeah, why not? Let's try. Let's try. Okay, okay. you heard it here first. Okay, we gotta. Uh oh. <laughs> be a little bit more. Okay. Speedy. Number I, three. I uh, um, I love my um, <clears throat> ultra luxurious Goyard travel trolley. Um, And there's a couple of things about this that even though it is a luxury thing, it's extremely practical. Now, number one, I'm going to have a picture of it on the website at lisabernbach.com so people can see it. Okay. It is beautiful. It's beautiful, but it has four wheels on the bottom and uh, has uh, lots of bags do. But it has four wheels on the bottom, has a handle that pulls up. Fits in the overhead. Mm-hmm, important. But the action on those wheels is spectacular. And when you're on a on a terrazzo floor, which all airports have, uh, no matter where you are, it's a terrazzo floor, it glides. Really? It glides like nothing I've ever experienced. And when you have the handle up, it creates a shelf. So you can put your... Uh, I never ch- check any luggage, by the way. Right. So I have my bulky tote and I have that thing you put the bulky tote on on top top of it it, and off you go it's effortless 
Wow. Effortless. It's it's wonderful. Is it heavy when you lift it up? It all depends on what, I mean, what you at put the, in it. Yeah, at the risk of... of uh, of, of stating the obvious, it all if, it all depends on what's in it. Um, and I, <laughs> I used to just say, of course, Sandy was appalled because it was so expensive. But I, he said, you know, do you realize that nothing that you put in that would ever be worth what the bag itself is worth? <laughs> That's mean. Well, there 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 was that <laughs> there was that edge to him, which I which I de- I loved we more loved than I it. yes. <laughs> Okay. Wow, and, it is and, beautiful, and, and they do you that. Personal, cus- and you, you personalize it, <clears throat> so so in theory, no one can steal it, right? Except um, that yours looks so great, probably people would want to steal it. But then again, you don't check it, so they won't get. Yeah, a never. I, I never check it. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. So that um, <clears throat> I have um, all, all the glasses I wear are perfectly round, mm-hmm. um, and the ones I have. On now are the tortoiseshell ones that are, you know, sort of... There are websites dedicated to you and your glasses. Do you know that? You're kidding. No, there's a fan site I found today while looking through. Oops. Yep. Wow, should I be scared? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. A little, All if right. you didn't know about it already. Yeah, yeah sure didn't. No, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, no, that's very sweet. But um, I, um, I get these on eBay... I search and I and I for these perfectly round clip-ons, and they made them in like forties, fifties, and it's and that's sort of a crapshoot because sometimes they fit and sometimes they don't. But um, when they do, um, and, and I'm traveling around and wearing them or something, inevitably somebody says, "Wow, those are great glasses." It's so and, cool. Plus, you don't have to change from your glasses to your sunglasses. Correct. I don't own... Because uh, I've worn glasses since I was in fourth grade, and, and I, I've i tried having um, prescription sunglasses, and it's just a pain in the neck. Okay, okay, number five. All right, now, do I get five or six, or...? You can get six, but we have to... All right, five. Real quickly, um, <clears throat> my late husband, Sandy, was the... Um, for three years, was the president of the prestigious Academy of Arts and Letters in New York, and um, I used to, they, they have this spring dinner awards ceremony thing. And after they print up, they embroider um, hats for everybody to, to take. And they're, they're basically, they're just sort of like canvas baseball caps or fishing caps. John Updike did an essay about it once because wow. that was his favorite uh, fishing cap to do gardening with. I'm not a baseball cap person, and, and but it looks sort of looks like a baseball cap, but it says Academy of Arts and Letters on it. Yeah. And, and so every now and then somebody will say, what team is that? <laughs> not yours. <laughs> and I notice you don't have the price tag on it like so many people in yeah. the subway. Yeah. I, I It was a decision I made. Yeah. No, I, I respect that mm-hmm. because you're a visual aesthetic right. yeah. person. No mini pearl for me. No mini pearl. Uh, nobody will even know, know who what that, that is. means. Yeah, well, they <laughs> we're can, speaking in old person they code. Can, they can Google it. Yeah, Googler, <laughs> Googler, baby. And then uh, the last thing is, <clears throat> you know, um, again, not to harp harp on my late husband J.D. McClatchy, but um, you know, I have his writing, and he was he was very prolific, mm-hmm. and. Um, so this, what I'm holding right now, and we'll show it on the website, his last book was actually called Sweet Theft, and I call it the world's most sophisticated bathroom reading. <laughs> oh, do you really? Yes, because... Is it a book of poetry? No, it's a it's what they used to call a commonplace book. Do you know what that is? Mm-mm. Oh. Well, Robert Pinsky writes on the back, from his choice discoveries... By quotation, J.D. McClatchy has constructed a worldly, quick, literate amusement park or hall of wonders enchanted by abrupt visions of reality. Laurie Moore says, reading sweet theft is like having the world's most erudite personal shopper. So he, this was a thing that he had been writing down in notebooks for 30 years. Oh, all the excerpts. And- so if you and, and you can open it up anywhere and just start reading. And um, it's just. Things that he would come across. Um, Auden said it is bad manners not to be boring occasionally. <laughs> um, just tons of tons. And uh, did you put it together? He he put we put he it together. It t- I mean, I designed the whole thing. This actually was um, published by Norton or Counterpoint. 
counterpoint um, because he had a friend there that wanted to do it. And and this was the last thing we worked on before he got sick. I took the picture. I love and, the picture. And it was just... but And this was the only book of his that got a daily review in the New York Times. You're kidding. And it was book number... 30, 40, 40 something. I mean, you know, it all depends because it all depends on how you. I mean, he edited a lot of collections. Right. Um, anyway, it was um, I, just in general, you know, he left all this work behind. And, and I'll, but I'll admit it's, you know, some of it's hard to read. And, but some of it, you know, it's like him. It's like hearing him. So I'm and, grateful for that. And you have it. And you have yes. a, two, two or three or four beautiful libraries amongst the holdings and you have and you have other projects I'm sure that will include Sandy yes. long past yeah. today. Yes and yes. And it's really a treat to see you. A treat to um, see you too. Thank you. And I want everyone to remember to go to the website at lisabernbach.com and you can see all of Chip's beautiful choices you can see my you know okay choices and you can uh subscribe you can go to apple podcasts and go to five things with lisa bernbach you can do that or not that's really i can't force you to do it thank you so much thank you chip thank you everybody stay cool oh yes and thank you christian mingle and thank you christian mingle (laughs) above all And if you want to sponsor this show, that's fine, too. (laughs) And so to everybody, stay cool, act natural. Bye-bye. That was Five Things with Lisa Bernbach. New episodes every Friday, if she remembers.